On this adventure, we're heading off on foot to tackle some of the most remote country Australia has to offer. We come across some of the most deadly animals Australia has and find some incredible sightings. We go hunting for food with only the bow and arrow and manage to find an epic feed to cook straight over the fire. We use some primitive techniques and this adventure all begins right now. We are so on right now, guys. We got the bow and arrow and look where we are, man. We are in the bloody middle of nowhere, guys. If I can explain to you guys how remote we are right now, it's probably over two hours, two to three hours to the closest person. So we need to make sure that we be extra careful out here today, guys, because, you know, if anything goes wrong, we're gonna be in massive trouble. But what we're doing is we are hunting with the bow and arrow. I wanna have one wicked cook up this afternoon, but I wanna hunt it primitive style with this bow and arrow. So what we're gonna do is just make our way through this ecosystem. We've got the ocean right here and on this side we've also got the mangrove system and from there we should be able to find some food that we can sling with this bow and arrow and uh, have a bit of a cook up. This is the stuff that I live for. I can almost guarantee you that less than a handful of people have been to this spot so let's just keep moving and uh, fingers crossed we come across something wicked. This is stonefish territory right here. You see there's all these little rocks this is exactly where they hang out so I'm going to just make sure I tread lightly across here. A lot of you guys are probably like, oh wait, don't worry about the bloody stonefish, mate. You'll be all good. But guys, I have seen the stonefish about 30 minutes up the road from this spot. So I'll show you that footage quickly. Guys, look what I've just found that's been sitting right in front of me. One of the most deadly creatures on planet Earth. He's literally missing all of his eyes. I've never seen this in my life. Look at him, we're gonna get him back in the water so he can breathe. Look at that, look how camouflaged that is, guys. That looks exactly like a rock. Uh, that is why I'm freaking out. Civ school of fish up here. I don't know exactly what it is, but you may be able to see just up here. Looks like some sharks maybe herding some fish into like a ball. There's so much life out here, man. Look at this. Oh my goodness, look at this. There's shovel nose sharks everywhere. Look at them. There's shovel nose sharks everywhere, man. Look at them. What the heck? What? Oh my goodness, look at this guy! No way bro, did you see that? There was hundreds of them just sunbaking in the shallows. Yeah, I did wreck their day, I chased after them, but man, that was incredible bro. All right, you guys may be able to tell, but we got a creek system right here that's running out to the ocean. The tide is turning right now, and it is gonna start flowing back in. So what I'm thinking is I'm just gonna try hunt this up river mouth for a little bit and hoping that everything starts flowing in and we might get another shot at something but uh let's just keep heading that way i can see some fish flashing over here fingers crossed we can sling them here they are just up here i have to go for a long shot oh here we get on no we missed them Look at them all. Mullet, I think, guys, they look quite small, though. It'll be hard to take one down. Oh. Here we get one. We just missed our whole school. All right, I've just dropped off the backpack, guys. What I want to do is I want to make my way up this creek system right now because what I'm thinking is there could be a potential of some fish up here. There's a lot of cod and mangrove jack up here, and also there is mud crabs up here, and also there's stonefish. But who cares about the stonefish? Well, bloody keep making our way up this river. Man, if we found a mud crab or like something like that, that would just be insane. Let's just keep moving. You never know what we're gonna find out here, really. It's just like these little ponds right here. And there's a lot of life still in them, but a lot of small fish. Not much big stuff, so let's keep moving. There's so many fish getting stuck through here. Woo. Had a lot of rain recently, so. Gotta watch out. Oh, big shovel nose shark. See that? Look at the mullet, man. Just spooked them. There's that many mullet. I just can't see where they are. They're just in this murky water here. Somewhere. I just missed all of them. Did I get one? This water is so murky, man. <clears throat> Look how many there is. I can't even hit one. So I'm just making my way through the backside of this mango system. The water usually is nice and clear through here, but the moment it's mud. I think it's because of all that rain. We had rain the last few days. 
and it never rains out here so uh, this water is taking on a lot of fresh water this is a fresh mud crab hole here I'm gonna put my arrow down and see if there's anything anyone home all right there's no one home not feeling any movement just a little baby mud crab I don't know if you can see him it's just a little baby one right there look at him just a little baby one but oh Dude, I nearly just stood on a sea snake. Are you kidding me, bro? Look at my foot. And that's a sea snake right there. Look at this guy. He's just cruising right now. Just making his way through all these rocks and everything like that. Guys, that is why you want to wear booties out here. And that is why I'm going barefoot. Because I'm an idiot. Look at this, bro. He's beautiful. All right. We'll let him do his thing. I don't want to stand on him, so. Probably be careful where I step, eh? That's not very good. I nearly just stood on that sea snake and look. That's how much protection I got, guys. Don't they always say, always wear protection? Yeah, guess I forgot that memo this time. I'm just using this uh, arrow to spook any stonefish that might be in front of me. Mr. Mud Crab, where are you? Guys, you start to go a little bit crazy out here when you bloody do this all by yourself for hours. It has got to be like 45 degrees out here right now, man. I'm sweating like bloody no tomorrow. I'll tell you that much. Very, 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 very dehydrated. All right, mango system seems to be quite dead. So what I want to try to do is we'll uh, backpedal back to the river mouth and we'll go try to hunt something with the bow. Um, that's probably our best option. Doesn't seem like there's many crabs around. I think that rain may have, uh, oh, buddy, washed him out of the system or something like that because I'm not seeing any signs of crabs. I've seen that one little one. Yeah, no big ones, but doesn't really sound right, eh? I'm not seeing any signs of crabs. While I'm making my way back to the river mouth, it just got me thinking, guys. We're growing so fast on this channel. I just want to say thank you guys so much for all your support. If you guys haven't already, please like and subscribe. It's the only thing that allows me to really keep creating this content for you guys. So if you enjoy it, please show your support. Like and subscribe. Head down there now. Keep watching and uh, appreciate all you guys. This is nuts, man. Oh, holy crap, man. Look at that. That is like one of the biggest shells I've ever seen in my life. Looks like one of those ones. Brrr. You know those ones? Yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's sick. All right, let's put him down. We'll keep going. Let's go. <laughs> Made a few mates. Just a few hundred flies attached to me as I keep walking. A lot of you guys always say, how do you put up with the flies? And they're going up your nose and in your mouth. Well, you don't put up with it. You learn to live with it. And that's exactly what I'm bloody doing out here. You just kind of get used to it, guys. The only time it really actually annoys me, the flies, Sometimes they fly straight into your ear and almost like into your eardrum and you just hear this like brrr, Whatever it is freaking mm, Whatever the sound is that a fly makes you know what I'm talking about right in your eardrum and man That is the one thing that pisses me off. I don't really care if they go in my mouth You know either just swallow it or just spit it out You know it doesn't really matter um, up your nose doesn't really matter either in your ear. That's the worst Here we go. Oh, no. Ah, oh, missed. Got a school of mullet just up here. I'm gonna go for a long shot. Be right there. Do we get one? I think we got one. We got one. We got one. What? No! No way! It's probably happened again, bro. Oh my goodness! Are you kidding me, man? Poor thing. I've just nailed him through the eye. I don't know if you can see it. I've just blinded him, man. Whoo! There was a bit of a school there, guys, so I must have just got lucky with this thing. But uh, he's not a massive mullet by any means, but he's going in the back pocket because he's going over the grill a little bit later on. Man, I can't believe I just smacked him in the eye. There's no way. His eye, man, look at that. Can you see that? It's about to come off. Should we just eat it for the sake of it? All right, let's eat his eye. His eye's right there. Let's suck it. Oh. 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 Just ate his eye, bro. Just sucked it out of his head. We got our first fish, an eyeless mullet. He's going in the back pocket. Uh, let's keep moving up that direction, guys. I reckon we should be able to hopefully find some bigger fish up that way. He's a small one. I'm going to need a few of them if, I, uh, if I'm running with just only the mullet. 
Look, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have a bloody stomach of steel. I can eat anything, as you guys are probably well aware of. But uh, even that double eyeball combo, bro, it is not sitting very well right now. Oh, it's a turtle, bro. There's a freaking turtle here. Imagine, guys. <laughs> There's no way I'd take down a turtle, bro. They're way too cute, but imagine. <laughs> Look how many shovel-nosed sharks there are, man. Look at them. They're everywhere. I could so easily sling one. These shovel-nosed sharks are just too helpless, guys. But I might see if I can try catch one with my bare hands. All right, I'm just gonna put this bow down for a second and see if we can catch one. What we're gonna do is run and try jump on top of these shovel-nosed sharks and see if we can catch one. And I'll give you guys a good look. We're not gonna keep him, we're not gonna hurt him. Just wanna show you guys um, how cute these animals are. And I reckon I can run and jump on one. Jeez, they're quick. Giving up on jumping on those shovel nose sharks, man. My hands just got so lit up. I don't know if you guys can see. I was pretty much jumping on gravel. It's gonna be like shooting fish in a barrel. Surely I don't miss. I just missed that whole school. What the heck? Not gonna lie, I'm feeling a little bit rusty with the bow and arrow. It's been a minute since I shot this thing, so that's why we're missing a lot of shots right now. Your school fish. I don't know if you guys can see them just there. Just here. Do we get one? Do we get one? I think we got one. We got one. Oh my goodness, guys. We freaking got one. What? There's no way, bro. I literally just got this whiting. Look at him. What? There's no way. Look at that. Not the greatest shot, but we got him, man. All right, guys, we just bloody hit this whiting. These are one of the best eating fish in the ocean around here, man. I'm frothing on that. That is a good size one, too. All right, I'm going to put him out quickly. The way you put him out, just grab his gills right there. And uh, just crack him just like that. Oh, he's dead. Beautiful whiting, man. I'm actually frothing, guys. These whiting are like one of my favorite eating fish. The good old humble whiting. If you've had them before, you know how good they are. Oh, bro. It's probably only like 4.35 and we already have a half decent feed. All right, guys, that sun out there is starting to slowly set over the horizon. And I don't want to leave it too late because we got a super remote trip back uh, tonight. We're not staying out here tonight. We just want to do a catch and cook. So what I want to do is I want to set up this fire right now and uh, I want to get that fish straight on. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. I'm going to show you guys, I guess, like a primitive style, um, like grill that you can make using some twigs. This thing's going to be sick. All right, so let's collect some kindling first and I uh, will get it up and going. Rolling your hands through it. That's the good piece. Perfect. Guys, I've got my knife, I've got my flint. I'm gonna try to spark this thing up. Uh, hopefully get it going. As you can see, I've dug out a little bit of a hole. It's really important for this grill because it's pretty much, we're gonna lay it off these edges here. So we want a little bit of a drop off. Let's get this thing going. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go, I'll grab these little twigs. Get the little twigs on. Here we go. Yes, we got it. All right, Let me get this on. Oh, my GoPro's burning. She's cooking, we got her. Fire's absolutely rearing hot right now, guys. It's really important that we get this nice coal base because what we want to do is we want to lay this rack across here. We don't want to burn the fish. We want to just make sure that it cooks nice and slowly. So I'm going to go collect the right things that we need uh, to make this rack, and I'll show you guys how we do it. So this right here, this is perfect. Exactly what we want. See that wire right there? That's what we want. All the rest we can get rid of. And it's good because this is a nice green piece of wood which means that it won't burn when we put it, uh, if it gets near the flame or anything like that. So what we want is we just want to keep this nice Y shape in this wood. That's our first one. We need four of these. Perfect Y shape, just like that. We'll get collect four. Guys, you may be able to see, we've got four pieces, four of these Y pieces. So you can see right there, we got a Y at the end of that one. We've got another one there. 
We've got another one there and another one there. And they're about even height. I don't know if you can see that. So what we're gonna do, we just wanna put, we wanna put them just one on either side of this fire. I'll make sure that they're in nice and nice and nice and deep. You guys can see right now, I've just collected a little thin piece of wood. What I'm gonna do is just, uh, just wanna grab the fish by its head. We wanna put it down its throat right there and then just keep threading it all the way through. Keep going. There's no point in scaling or gutting these fish. It doesn't really matter. We wanna make sure that it goes all the way quite through. And then what we're gonna do, just lay it just like that over our two pieces of Y shaped wood and that should just slowly cook next to that fire. We'll grab our, another piece of wood and the other fish and we'll get him on. This is the mullet that we suck the eyes out of. So same thing, just wanna thread it straight through the throat and then out the tail right there. And we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna put it straight over, just like that. And look at them, they'll just rest straight over that fire, absolutely beautiful, and just slowly cook. Oh my goodness, look at this. Homemade fish spit roast. Straight over the fire. Super simple method, guys. I wanna show you guys that's, you know, not too complicated that you guys can easily go out and replicate. So this right here, it just literally requires two pieces of Y-shaped wood, just a simple Y, put them on either side of the fire, lay one across, thread it through the fish, and buddy Bob Uncle, you're laughing. It's important that the spit roast that you use, they have to be green logs, because if you just use normal, I guess, dead wood, it will just burn all the way through. As you can see right here, there's flame on the base of this, but it's not burning, it's just standing nice and solid, and that's because it's green. If that was a uh, normal dead wood, that thing would not be standing. That thing would be falling over. So, it actually looks like it's getting a nice cook there. All right guys, I've just come down to the water's edge right now because I want to show you something super special. So tomorrow is actually my birthday and I've got a super special mission planned. You guys are going to see it on the YouTube um, and it's going to be epic. But anyway, I don't have enough time to charge all my gear. So I actually bring one of these on my trips with me. This is how I do it. This is what we call an EcoFlow. I guess it's just like a battery pack portable battery. I bring this on all my trips and as you can see, it's charging two of my GoPro batteries right now. You can pretty much hook this thing into anything. It can bloody do a blender, toaster, not that I would ever bring that on my trips, but you know, mostly what I use it for is my phone, my GoPro batteries, my drone. And man, this thing, it's super light. I just take it wherever I go and it's actually super hardy. I throw it in my car sometimes, throw it into the PowerPoint and it just allows me to be out here and keep all my stuff charged. You know guys, I wouldn't recommend anything to you guys that I haven't tried myself and that I don't believe you guys will find benefit in. This is what I call an EcoFlow. These things are actually really top-notch quality and I'd highly recommend if you guys are into a battery pack and you're looking for one, check these out. They're probably the best in the business. And uh, yeah, this is how we do it. Off-grid, charging all the gear. This is the way it's done, baby. This thing is an absolute weapon guys. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. You guys can go look at all the minor details and get into all that stuff. But I can guarantee you this thing is the best small battery that you can take off grid. This thing's a weapon bro. All right, let's get back to that fish. Um, should be just about done. Let's go. So you can see I've just given him a little bit of a turn. He's nice and cooked. All right, taking him off. Oh, look how nice and evenly cooked that one is. That's way better than those charcoal ones. All right, let's put him on here. All right, the moment of truth has come, guys. What is better, straight over the coals or spit roast? As you guys can see right there, that is one of our spit roasted whiting that we shot with the bow and arrow, man. It's actually so sick. Guys, if you know me, I don't spend much time on cooking. I literally just want to smack it on there and get it off. That's just the way I am. So let's check out how this meat is. Let's see if it's nice and white. Oh, bro, we nailed this, man. Look at that. Very, very good sign. Look at that, and just peel back the skin, and it's just beautiful white meat. Look at that, beautiful white meat. Let's give her a shot. All right, spit roast is good, man. Spit roast is very, very good. I gotta give this mullet a shot though, so obviously we know the spit roast is the best. Let's give this mullet a shot, man. Mullet straight over the fire is actually pretty good. It's not even that bad, so let's give her a shot. All that white meat. A lot more of like a, a fishier flavor, the mullet, compared to the whiting. The whiting's just a really nice, subtle taste. But, you know, it's still pretty good. I'm literally sucking the meat off the bone. That whiting is so good. If you guys enjoyed this one, please show your support. Like and subscribe. We're growing so fast, and it's because of all of you guys. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Much love. Shoo! Bye.